Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode beta 57 for Friday the 20th of November 2015. This is the show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever the hell else comes to mind. I'm Amos and that's Kent. How you doing, man? I'm good. <laughs> I know, I went old school. I didn't insult you or anything. Oh no, that was so weird. It's like, wow, what a cordial introduction. Yay. Uh, I have no idea how to respond to a cordial introduction. <laughs> He's being nice. What's he want? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> All right, man. Um, so how's your week been? Uh, busy. Busy. Uh, par- partially because of work and partially self-inflicted. Oh. So, you know. All right, good detail. Not all bad. So, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> now, now that we know everything about you, um, yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, yeah. It's been. It's. It, I'll go with busy. It, it's definitely busy. Um, so we have a we have a guest with us this week. Yep. One each. Dan Christensen, that guy right there, um, also known as Sergeant Muffin in the chat realm, and on Twitter. And anywhere else, his friends want to embarrass him. So <laughs> they stalk me high and low. <laughs> That's awesome. How you been, man? Pretty good. How about yourself? Ah, uh, you know, S- we... st- staying in there. <laughs> I'm just lucky to be in frame right now. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> Speaking of which, can't you need to raise your camera up just a little bit? Oh really? Yeah, because I can't see your your bunny ears from your bookshelf. There we go. Oh, okay. Is that better? <laughs> <laughs> That's how I judge everything now. I have to have the the bunny ears on the bookshelf, the, 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 the raccoon ears. But I don't know what that would be. Uh so um, so I have a little story for you. I was gonna load up a picture and I totally forgot it. I'll, I'll throw, probably throw it in the show notes. Um, I was briefly a millionaire this week. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the exchange rate right now for dollars to one is about 1200 to one. So when I went and bought my airline ticket at a thousand or $1,100 or whatever it was, I had like 1.3 million one. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Walking from the place to exchange to the place to buy my ticket. And, uh, I, I actually took a picture of it and I was going to, going to share it, but yeah, I completely forgot. But yeah, this is a 1.3 or one, I don't know. Some, it was some ridiculous number of one, like felt real special walking around with the envelope <laughs> in my pocket for 20 minutes. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. It's like having a million pennies though. <laughs> I'll still take a million pennies. <laughs> yeah. a briefcase man it's, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> and a real deal <laughs> there was a story about a, a dude that had um, uh, 55 gallon drums in his basement and he just saved all of his pennies every penny he ever found like from his entire adulthood so right before he died at like 97 or whatever when he was like 94 he called the bank and had them come and, come over and you know they, they thought he was, he was just joking with them like, was like yeah my basement's full of pennies I like to I like to cash those in, and so they came out and had to like hire a contracting company because there's so many of them, and they're 55 gallon drums. Can you imagine 55 gallon drum of pennies? Oh my god! So, but he had like 30 something 55 gallon drums of pennies. It came out well, to like two million and some odd dollars. Yeah, that has to be. I mean, think about there's some space of air, but I mean that's essentially about 60 percent pure copper in that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is insane. Yeah. Just a, a small block, you know. It's like wow. Yeah, it was it was ridiculous. But yeah, he uh, I saw that. I don't know. Maybe it was a uh, uh, might have been the rest of the story or something like that. I don't know. But yeah, I thought that <laughs> like you just save well, all your pennies. The stairs. And the only thing I could ever think of was Jeremy flicking his pennies all over the place, thinking, dude. <laughs> yeah, you need to save those, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, buddy, a, a friend of our Jeremy, uh, he's been on the show before. He, when we were walking around town, a little town of 350 people, he would have these pennies in his pocket. And he would just, like, he'd like flick them, just trying to, you know, like, dude, why are you always <laughs> flicking pennies? You know, like, you know, you flick pennies but bum cigarettes. Like, come on, man, think of the math here. <laughs> <laughs> and then he got real smart and started just handing us the penny. He's like, motherfucker, I don't want your penny. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What am I going to do with a penny? I want a cigarette. <laughs> yeah. I don't want 55 gallon drums worth of pennies in my basement. <laughs> I don't necessarily want 55 gallon drums worth of cigarettes either, but <laughs> yeah, or, or anything for that matter. Uh, I'll take gold. 55 gallon drums full of gold. I'm there. Yeah, sure, sure. That's a win. <laughs> I, I, like I don't, I don't think you can get past that. Even fake gold, it'd just be nice to look at. But uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, how, how about you, Kent? Man, uh, what was uh, some of the stuff that happened to you this week? 
Yeah. Uh, well, one of the things is avoiding the thousands and thousands of fucking Star Wars trailers that they keep coming out with. Wasn't it like a month ago they said, here's our final Star Wars trailer? Now right. it's like, like no. no kidding, like three or four new ones every week. Right, but those aren't the American ones. Those are the Japanese ones and the no, Philippine no, no, no. ones. It's the, it's the TV spots. They keep coming out with TV spots, like 30 oh, seconds. So, so it's not an official trailer. It's a TV spot. Right, but they all have new material in them. And the only reason I know that is because once one starts to play in my feed, I I got to watch it. I can't <laughs> not watch it. <laughs> so, but it's aggravating. The, I'm done. I don't want to see any more footage until December 18th. Yeah. This is one of the good things about being over here and having AFN, not having commercials. Yeah. Like we don't see shit. <laughs> but awesome. how will you know what to buy? Oh, uh, because they have plenty of advertisements for the BX spattered all over the place. Yeah, that's true. Um, I saw the banner today about uh, the BX being open early at 7 a.m. on uh, Black Friday. And I was like, People still do Black Friday. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I hit Amazon deals and sit there and just kind of yeah, watch that as it goes by. You know. Exactly. Cyber Monday became a thing, and now it's like, okay, so the entire month of November is going to be like our Black Friday well, on you, Amazon. You, or yeah, whatever. isn't that true? I mean, it just gets yeah. bigger and bigger. And <clears throat> why even? Yeah. Why go to a big box store, wait in line, freeze your ass off? In my case. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I never do it. I never do it. I, I went out one time. It was probably, I don't know, 12 years ago or something. I went out one time on Black Friday, and I swore never, ever In to do it again. Th three, like three black eyes later, right? Yeah. It, it's a riot out there. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah. I, no. no. Oh, no. yeah. It, people are at their absolute worst. Well, you know, like uh, like two weeks ago was the international version of it, like Couples Day or Lover's Day or whatever it was. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. But it's like the worldwide, that's the biggest shopping day of the year. And then Black Friday, and then you know all that other stuff. Um, so yeah, it's like I'm just happy Thanksgiving's coming because once it passes, I can stop getting it out of my head. Why are you singing Christmas songs? <laughs> right. You know the Christmas decorations been up for months here. You know, like uh, at least a solid month. They've already been up. The Christmas trees are up. The like people have the the wall decorations on their doors and shit. And it's just like, come oh, on, yeah. man. I, uh, yep. Yeah, it's just it's yeah. awful. All right. Uh, yeah. So other than that, though, speaking of Star Wars, I I got uh, a PS4 this week with Battlefront. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, calm down. All right. <laughs> all right. Uh, now, was this a uh, was this a gift or or a, a prize? Did you like oh, no, enter no. enter a drawing and like somebody gave it to you? I mean. Did you find a way out of the taxes? I mean, so are you are you trying to insinuate? Because I, I know you're not saying it. Are you trying to insinuate that you actually spent the money to buy a PS4? I did, in fact. W w okay, so so is this like one of those roughly used? Somebody dropped it down the stairs and you you bought it for like two bucks, hoping it would work. Oh no 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 no! It's brand new. I pre-ordered it on Amazon actually. What? Wait, what? Yeah, in fact, you know what? I went to ritualmisery.com. <laughs> and clicked on our Amazon support link. Say it isn't so. So, yeah. Did you buy it from like a third party <laughs> retailer so that you didn't pay full price? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. We're going to we're gonna get a nice little kickback from my purchase. <laughs> I don't, I, I'm, I, I appreciate the kickback and, and, and supporting the site and, and, uh, and, and our podcast, but I'm, I'm still befuddled on how somebody convinced you to spend that much money on anything. Like this, this is this is the guy that that's to insinuate that I'm a cheapskate. I'm not insinuating it. I'm flat out saying it. <laughs> I've said so this. Hey, I'm such a cheapskate so that I can splurge once in a while. This was my splurge moment. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. So Battlefield, man, tell us about it. What's up? Or Battlefront? Battlefront. Yeah. Um, wow, man. Uh, it is awesome. It has consumed pretty much all of my free time since what day did it come out tuesday tuesday or wednesday tuesday sure. came out on tuesday now did you get yeah. like a special edition does it have like the the rebel side on one and the the you know imperial shield on the other yeah see oh I, I uh, yeah. see that's how they hooked you the special the special battlefront <gasps> edition yeah the ps uh yeah it man it is so much fun if you like fps's at all which i'm not a huge fan of fps 
but I was a fan of the the old Battlefront. Hmm. I never games. played it. And, and when I saw the the gameplay footage of the new one, mm-hmm. I was like, oh man, I, you know, this is this is the thing that's going to make me upgrade to the PS4. And yeah, no regrets so far. That that game, wow, it is so expansive and immersive. It's, I mean, you're you're in a battle in Star Wars. It's it's fun. It is a lot of fun. No, no. If anybody wants to play with me online, my <laughs> PlayStation Network name is Del Noche. So look me up. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> <laughs> so well, so. Hey, guess what? My name was taken already by some asshole. <gasps> oh, what? Yeah. Sergeant. Yeah, you wouldn't think that. Who in the hell? Number one, who in the hell would take the name? Right. That's why I took the name. So then I realized, wow, there's like four other people in the the world that use it. Oh, and what the heck? So I had to pick real Sergeant Muffin. Oh, see I'm now, going now Donald that, Trump route. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's, <laughs> that's that's double fun because that's like uh you know, <clears throat> that's that's not only Sergeant Muffin. Like who the hell's gonna do that? But then all the people that you make fun of because they're late to the internet on something, they gotta put the <laughs> real <laughs> or the. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yes, yes. Or RM underscore, like. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, he just had tons of numbers on the end and just explained, I tried everyone underneath. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Had to go five digits out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's then actually, they told me my name was too long. Yeah, it's, it's actually <laughs> base 36. Go figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah tra- transfer that over to ASCII and let me know what you think. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dan. So, have you played? Uh, have you played the old Battlefront? No, I have not. Um, <sighs> I have a PS4, but I don't play it that much. Yeah. Uh, I got it uh, when it first came out. Someone was down. It actually, it was yeah. What was it? It came out in November. Was that two years ago now? Uh, something and like that. They just probably, the, yeah. probably. I'm always late to the game when it comes to new consoles. <laughs> I'm still well, rocking my 360, my secondhand 360. So, <laughs> well, at the time I had a, a gaming community. So this is before you know Diamond Club or even the Brick Slap site. And I just got a random call. I was at work, and a guy from the gaming clan said, "Hey, I just went shopping with my son at this Walmart. They just stocked about 15 units. Do you want? I'm gonna just buy them all. Do you want? Oh. Do you want one?" And so I, I got it at cost. And I'm like, oh, of course. Oh, oh hell you shit. The thing that sucks is I actually had a choice between them. And just looking at the game route, I really was looking Xbox One. I should have done that. Mm. And I know that sounds weird. I like PS4 is great. But I don't know. I just like some of the games on, on the Xbox, like the fours are Racing. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. My, my problem has always been that uh, the PlayStation controller my hands don't fit the PlayStation controller. Like, I don't know if I have, like, monster hands or if, you know, if... It, 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 I, I don't know. My hands just, just don't gimp. fit. Her. Huh? You're just gimp? Yeah, that could be. I still kicked your ass at Tony Hawk. child though. hands. That's our family treat. <laughs> Tiny little hands. <laughs> oh. so here, put it in perspective. An iPhone 6 Plus? My hand. Oh. Tiny. <laughs> I feel like the guy in that Whopper commercial. You know, I got these tiny hands. I can't. <laughs> oh my gosh! And Dan That's has great. T-Rex hands. Oh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the uh, PlayStation, PlayStation controller just never felt right. So the Xbox controller, I loved it. Like it's it's perfect for my hand. Well, if I could get an Xbox controller for the PlayStation, I would switch immediately. But I, it just. Whenever I see them, they're like, you know, yeah, it's an Xbox style controller, but then it's like miniature size. Like, what the hell am I uh, gonna do with that? You know, like, well, who is it that makes all those all, all the controllers for like the different Namco or Tiger, whatever? Tiger Mad or Cats? something? Yeah, Mad, Mad, Cats. Mad Cats. There we go. I, yeah, Mad Cats. I'm surprised <clears throat> Mad Cats doesn't have. They probably do. Oh, probably some patent crap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I can go to a GameStop and get. Yeah. See, but yeah. I have I haven't actually played the uh, PlayStation Four, so I don't know if the controller has changed enough. I know that it's changed a little bit since the actually, three yeah, and the two. Yeah, it is. It's a little more contoured and it's it is more comfortable, but it's it's basically the same shape and size. See, as but it's can, you've got like Skeletor hands. Like I've got a middle ground between <laughs> you and Dan. Like my hands are like, you know, yeah, full size, normal width, and everything else. 
can't you got like skeletor fingers like your fingers are like extra long and like super skinny like uh, piano player yeah fingers. yeah you, you can you can type from across the room and shit you know what i mean like <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah. so battlefront worth it yeah uh yeah i say so <laughs> now are you still playing in your little crt in the in the in the library there was it oh yeah on occasion i i haven't <laughs> I haven't. Man, it's probably been. It's probably been about a month since I've fired up the Atari. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've, got a, I've got a fully functional Atari seventy eight hundred. Oh, that's nice. It's yeah. oh, it's badass. Kent, it. Kent, the reason Kent survives his his uh, Scroogeness is because he never throws anything away. <laughs> yeah. So he he's both a, a tight ass and a pack rat. So, it just so kind of shelf behind a reflection of him. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's that's yeah, every every book he's a... ever read. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to be less of a pack rat. I'm actually trying to cut down the, <clears throat> on so, all of my crap. That's what they all say. That's Let the difference one. between a pack rat and a hoarder. A hoarder doesn't even go. bother cutting stuff out. A pack <laughs> rat at least goes through once in a while and gets rid of a few things. Right. Yes. Like, hey, so this I'm, this I'm book is in... this book don't work no more. <laughs> yeah, so I am firmly in the pack rat column. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same here, especially when it comes to electronics. Oh man. Okay, so uh, let's get. Thanks for having a a hand measuring contest. Is that something like a dick measuring contest? Uh, so you know what they say. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm a man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so three inches is good, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, three oh, three oh, inches oh, in oh. in girth, bitch. What's up? <laughs> oh, fantastic! Oh man, I just insulted like every female listener we've ever had. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's about time though. I mean, you know, I've, I've danced around them long enough. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why it took so long. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. I've already insulted the uh, the the entire gay community, um, all Apple fanboys. Most of the nerds, uh, anybody that has any kind of religious background, I like. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much. I'm, doing, I'm Eventually, I'm going to get everybody. You know, right? Yeah. To the offender. Yeah. As soon as I can find a, a couple <laughs> racial slurs that aren't going to get my ass kicked, I'll be in there. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! That's awful. Make fun of like purple people or something. I don't know. Yes. Yes. Purple people. <laughs> it's not the purple people you got to watch about, watch out about though. It's the purple people eaters. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's why you don't find a whole lot of purple people. All the purple people eaters. <laughs> damn purple people eaters. Yes, yes. Um, uh, oh, all right, shit. man. So, uh, Geeky Things of the Week. That was yours. Mine, yeah. I, I'm, I, I'm officially prepped up. Next weekend, I'm going to upgrade my OS. Oh. Uh, Happy 10? Yeah. It's not that bad. Works well. Yeah, it, it, yeah. I, I, I did it like a month ago. It's it's fine. Yeah, but can't you did it and but you just patched. Right, right, right. Oh, I see. Yeah, you're, I'm you're I'm going for a full wipe. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so Yeah, you always have to make everything a project. Uh yes, yes, because I like my things to run as smoothly as possible, so I complicate the process so the result <laughs> is smooth. <laughs> In theory. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> Um, <laughs> meanwhile, on my operational iPhone 6 Plus, I run the beta software as soon as it comes out. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I wait forever for my OS operations, operating system, but I'll just take whatever beta they give me on the phone. Yeah, I, I think it's because there's there's less variables with the mobile OSs. Uh, I think it's just because it's more fun. Like, I get random I shit and try to figure it out, and it crashes. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I got a crash. Let me report it. Oh, shit, somebody's already found it. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, they do the... Beta's public now. Yeah, because I remember back when they made the, the, the Apple iOS Seed program. Beta one, and and I had the developer thing. I had it. Yeah, and I'm with a small cell phone carrier in the area. Mm. And when our rep was in the area, he he saw my phone in the distance. He's like, "What the hell? How'd you get that?" <laughs> I'm like, "I said I we we have an app that you know all of our guys use, and I have to make sure it works. So that's why I got it." Mm. Oh my gosh, nap guys never use Beta One of <laughs> Apple anything. You can't, I couldn't even place a phone call on it. Oh, oh, jeez. Like, hmm. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's that's an iPhone for you. 
<laughs> it's it's beta. That's they, yeah. they warned you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. They warned me, and I thought that they had better standards before mm. they released it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just just imagine what the alphas are like. So no, so just... this is this is OS eight with nothing but FaceTime. That's all you can do is just FaceTime. <laughs> <laughs> FaceTime video? No, no, no. FaceTime audio. Except just... all this is just the still shot of you going like this. <laughs> <laughs> you turn it on, you just see a hand. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Play, Stop in the name of the <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Be a great troll. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I think uh, the first time I got in on betas for, uh, for any kind of Apple product was, was it 7, Kent? Because I found the uh, the the gold master for seven. I think it was seven, yeah. So they uh, like like I I got the last beta. No, I I think I got a couple betas before the gold master of seven, off the uh, the usual suspects, and <laughs> um, had that on there and was was playing with that and it it had quite a few bugs. Like I like I, if I wanted to make a phone call, I had to reset my phone. You know, <laughs> like oh, like turn it yeah. off, turn it back on, then make a phone call. I get text and FaceTime. Like every other function worked fine on the phone, but if I actually wanted to make a cellular phone call on my cellular phone, <laughs> I had to I had to restart it because apparently it had a buffer problem or whatever. So, just on that one app, the Nextel network, walkie-talkie. <clears throat> oh my yeah. god! Oh, oh, blast from the past! There, <laughs> holy crap! <laughs> with everything yellow, you try to be stealth with the Nextel phone, you're out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's Tried mostly black, except for that neon black. yellow stripe around the edges. <laughs> <laughs> or or uh, Verizon, when, when all their phones were flip phones, and you couldn't turn off the starting sound, and it was like full blast, like, like oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh my god, you just woke up the entire house. <laughs> I remember the old Motorola phones was like, hello, Moto. <clears throat> yeah. Like, but it was like the the it was like a robotic voice went through a robotic <laughs> tran, uh, filter, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, that was awful. All right, how about you, Dan? What's the what's your geekiest thing? <laughs> oh, okay, well, a little bit of a backside here. Um, I'm a coder. I bet you didn't know that. Oh so, no, you, you don't say. Stuff, New, uh, newsflash <laughs> for for our, my business that actually makes money on like Diamond Club. Um, we're working on a thing that. Um, we're able to take all the customers, and there's around like 27,000, and put them all on the map. And I'm making a thing where you can schedule things online, and then based on the address you give us, it looks at open spots to where vehicles are at because it's a home service company. Mm, mm, and it'll mm. actually give the order to the customer through our self-service portal you know, to tell you, hey, uh, this, this time is the best. Wow. So it's kind of uh, doing some AI scripting. So there's several things it looks at. And fortunately, it does it really quick. You know, sometimes you're you code this and you're like, oh gosh, this is way more complicated. Didn't even think about this. And yeah, yep. actually, it's it's working out well. It's kind of it's a fun fun thing to play around with. Nice, that's cool, man. That's awesome. I remember uh, my first coding class that I went through. Um, I was deployed, so I had nothing better to do. You know, I was I was only working like three days a week. They were like really long days, but there was only three days a week, so I had this all this time on my hands. And it was this very simple program. We had to return a cost estimate based on a few parameters. We had to we had to write everything ourselves. They basically just gave us a table with the with the cost and stuff like that. But I went beyond that. I also put in a uh, a, 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 a subroutine for customer service feedback, and you know, like I, I went all out because I had nothing better to do, and <laughs> I submitted it, and he gave me a hundred and a warning. <laughs> He said, next oh, time we accomplish the objective and that's it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> wow. which, which made the class a lot easier, but much less fun. Yeah. The last time I learned any actual programming was basic. In high school? Basic, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, I've done, I've done some, well, a bunch of HTML and CSS and a little bit of JavaScript and stuff like that. But actual programming was basic <laughs> there was hey, a t- got the job done at the time yeah there, there, yeah, there was a time yeah. where i was fluent in html like you, yeah. you tell me what you want to see and i could between html4 and css i could design yep. the whole thing on the yep. fly maybe a reference or two to one of my books now i couldn't even begin to tell you about html like it has right. in the last 15 oh, years it's that? moved so much 
I'll tell you one thing. It is an absolute nightmare because I, I'm kind of like you where I the code I know is mostly HTML4. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, a lot of that moved over with 5. Yes. But they took things like tables that were so basic mm. and they just said, okay, nope, no more. Yep. Now you got to do... Uh, divs, and then you have to go into the style sheets and call them tables. Yep. When you oh yeah, just yep. put a table in, you know. Yeah. And some of the stuff I get it, you know, style sheets they definitely have a great purpose, but I miss being able to add actually just go in and label a font as red and not have to go yes. class name equals <laughs> yes, red yes, yes, and go up and then say oh now it's red. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it, it's it almost like, like the uh, steps. yeah the the people that designed the the HTML five standard are the same people that design the apps and, and programs that you use in order to find shortcuts in using the HTML5 standard. You know? <laughs> <laughs> if we complicate this just enough, nobody will <laughs> bitch, but everybody will want to buy our service. <laughs> yeah, well, what was it? They had free software, too. The, the, the HTML kit. I yeah, think. HTML kit was amazing. Yeah, but yeah, it, that's the only thing I ever... If I used anything, which I usually just hand-jammed everything and, and just... Right. You know, seen if it worked. Um, but if I used anything, it was HTML kit, and usually that was just to validate syntax and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, now, now you've got uh, for the Mac, you've got Text Wrangler. It was, it's mm. wonderful. It's multi, uh, multi, pro, uh, multi language, and everything else. You can get uh, put add-ins in it and get you know it's extendable or whatever. Excuse me. That's that's what I did for the uh, for the Ritual Misery web, 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 web website when I built that. Mm. They use text wrangler and it, it it gives you just enough like you said you know you don't need all the shortcuts you don't need everything highlighted and everything else 50 53 different colors whatever just a quick mm-hmm. hey where's you know where's this oh there it is right there da, da, da. so mm-hmm. but looking at code for normal web pages now if if it's not like an active server page which just completely blows me away because that's <laughs> yeah. yeah that's something else know. entirely <laughs> like i remember look at like looking at the the programming languages for like muds back in the day Oh. Um, and it was all in C and, and uh, C plus plus, and it's it's so easy to follow because <laughs> it's it's just right there, you know. And uh, no, not no more. And anything that I look at now is just okay. This is five years of my life I have to invest in order to figure this out. Yeah, it's it's basically ones and zeros to me <clears throat> anymore. So so, what is your if you were to consider a native language, Dan? What would it be? Ooh, native language for, uh, for... that I work with is pretty much P to P, or PHP and. Uh, well, MySQL, which is database, but yeah. there's still a language to work with it. I try to do everything around that because that's what I know. And then, <laughs> of course, I can jump into other things. PHP lets you run something on a server. You know, you can actually force it to run a command line thing, grab mm-hmm. what comes back. So it, it, it kind of sets a baseline. Um, some people may hate it because PHP gives you a little too much power. <laughs> so let's say someone gets in. I mean, you could take one script and remember the crypto locker viruses going around at one point. You could do mm. that same thing for a web server if you wanted to. Mm. If someone opens it up, all of a sudden, boom, it just goes through all the files they can find, encrypts them. You know, it, it's a little too much power sometimes, but yeah, I don't know yeah. I like it. Yeah, I actually and, have a, uh, I brought my PHP, what, 5 is it? I think it's 5 they're currently on, right? Uh, they're wor- Yeah, they're working on... Gosh, is it six or seven? I'm trying to remember. I know seven is in development. They might be skipping six. Mm. Gosh, I'm so out of it with that. <laughs> but yeah, I, I actually brought my PHP 5 Bible with me, uh, PHP 5 and MySQL. Um, brought it here with me because I figured I'd, I'd spend some time trying to you know learn it and everything else. That's, that's actually what, uh, what WordPress is, is written in. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's really usable. It's, it's like uh, the people that... <laughs> The people that were using HTML4 and just didn't want to go to XML, they're like, ah, no, we're going to go this way. And, then, and that's where PHP came from. <laughs> yeah, did you know it was that PHP stands for PHP Hypertext Program? Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a recursive al- algorithm. Yeah. Or a yeah. recursive <laughs> acronym. Yeah. Yeah, Hypertext Preprocessor. That's what it is now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Like, my brain shut off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so. Time uh, zones. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck time zones. 
<laughs> we, we, I, I'm, I'm we, jumping on that on that wagon now, Amos. See, you, you started out like a year ago, I think, saying fuck time zones, and I was like, no, they're kind of useful. Yeah, no, 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 they're not. No, fuck time zones. No, it, it, <laughs> it, and uh, we actually, I had this conversation with a guy at work yesterday. You know, because your main argument was, well, people just aren't going to stand for eating dinner at you know eight o'clock in the morning. You know, and it's just, just, just the awkward factor. And I was like, you know, my 13 year olds, my 15 year old, my 13 year olds and my 10 year old, they're going to find it awkward for about a year and then they're just going to go with it. It's just, that's how it is. Okay. Boom. On with life. It's only the old fucktards like us that are going to be like, (laughs) my three year old has no idea what a time zone is or what time it is. Like she counts to 20 and, you know, associating the hours with the time. (laughs) <laughs> no concept. So if we switched, she would be golden. She would never even know the old time zones. Like it'd be a for, completely foreign concept to her. So mm-hmm. in thirty years, we're going to be too old for anybody to listen to. My fifteen year old <laughs> and my thirteen year olds are going to be just fine with 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 the new system. Like they're going to remember it, but it's going to be that like, you know, remember when when pennies used to be actual copper and they weren't like filled with zinc. <laughs> Do you care? No, but you remember. <laughs> That's how it's going to be for them if we were to switch now. And my three-year-old would never even know. It'd be completely like like you had. There was life without the internet, right? right. <laughs> you know, like so. Why did why did Paul Revere have to ride down the streets and yell stuff? Why couldn't he just you know mass text it out? You know, <laughs> why couldn't <laughs> he just send a tweet? a tweet? Yeah, why couldn't he just put a tweet out there? You know. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's. They were all <laughs> using Snapchat. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was late at night. They watched it once and lost it. I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know that that's kind of how these time zones are. Let's just get rid of them. Go to GMT. Though the internet uses it anyway. You know, all internet internet servers are using UTC, or whatever. So screw it. Uh, well, uh, not always. <laughs> he said. He said not always. <laughs> <laughs> at least yeah, I, I got tired of dealing with utc so i i just set up our the the diamond club server that you're stream or streaming through right now i told it just pretty much deal with central for everything and then i just work around that <laughs> you which you can force it you can just say yeah okay script wise just this is the time zone you're gonna be dealing with yeah mm. it's uh yeah, yeah so much fun <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. and then daylight savings time <laughs> oh yeah. So so now I feel bad. We've actually had so much fun in this in this conversation that I have forgotten to keep my hand my eyes on the chat room. Um and Lucas has been saying stuff like the, <laughs> the entire time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's in there going nuts, whole bunch of stuff and <laughs> <laughs> like hashtag tiny hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I've been watching. <laughs> that, that, that ain't right. <laughs> yeah, he, he he does want to tell everybody that Overwatch the uh, Blizzard game mm-hmm. is having an open beta from today till Sunday. Uh, I I was all hyped about that and really psyched to see what it looked like and everything else until I started watching. Um, uh, oh, I can't remember Panzer on the uh, the old YouTube's. She started streaming it. Um, I saw some of Scott Johnson stream and and it's just it just looks like another FPS. Hey, I'm gonna go blow stuff up, and you know, it, 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 the the theme to it isn't enough to wrap me up into it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But of course, I haven't actually played it, so it could be the funnest game ever. I don't know. Yeah, well, Lucas is trying to get me hyped about it because he he keeps hyping it up, and he's really excited about it. And I was like, dude, I I'm just not that into it because it's you know I'm not into FPSs. Mm-hmm. And he's like, says the guy who just ordered Battlefront. <laughs> I was like. Okay, all right. Yeah, like, I mean, damn it, here's a Coke, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just go away. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so uh, so it, it would be about this time right here. And eventually you'll be able to hear that, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we got some TED Talks. All three of us actually have TED Talks to, walk, walk, uh, to go through. And I figured we'd start with Dan's because I just watched it while I was eating lunch during our prep time. Mm. Oh. And uh, Jane's Randy, hom- Homeopathy, Quackery, and Fraud. Mm. Um, first of all, if you don't know who James Randy is, the amazing Randy, he's a pretty well-known uh, skeptic 
He calls himself a conjurer because a conjurer is someone who pretends to be a, a magician, and a magician is somebody who pretends to have powers. So <laughs> that, those are his words from this, this talk, actually. Um, amazing Randy is amazing. He, he's, he's had a long period of time of being a skeptic and trying to break things out. So um, what in particular did you really like about this talk, Dan? Well, I this is the uh, first thing I ever watched of uh, him, and just I don't know, it kind of blew me away, and it made me just kind of stop and think. Well, first off, I mean, if you've never seen him before, you fall for almost all of his tricks mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, because it starts off with him like speaking into a microphone. Spoiler alert: It's, it's not a uh, <laughs> microphone; it's a beard trimmer. And he also just says, you know, but you guys just assumed, and you thought I could see you. No, these are fake glasses. You know, <laughs> yeah, and. You just said you make assumptions and everyone can be fooled, and and pretty much was that he over, he uh, takes an entire pill or bottle of uh, sleeping pills, but because they were homeo homeopathic or how to pronounce it, um, homeopathic. It, what? it was yeah, it was, <laughs> it wasn't, <laughs> it didn't have any power to it. Yeah, and it's just it's kind of funny, you know. He um, he doesn't want to ruin people's lives. He actually wants people to not waste time and money. Mm -hmm falling for things that are scientifically proven not to work you know mm -hmm. to some level the things work because of placebo i'm not going to say it's not fully you know yeah. it, it definitely has it but it's just he opens up a lot of interesting discussions mm -hmm. um if, if you like the ted talk and i, I suggest this is one of those that i'm, I'm going to suggest that everybody should watch it i'm sure dan is too because he's <laughs> they're smiling um <laughs> there's a there's a film about him on uh on netflix it's like a, a an honest liar Yes, yes. Oh my gosh, such a good movie. It's it's long. It's a it's a two and a half hour biography. So mm -hmm. worth it. So completely worth it. Um, it talks about not only like how he became famous and what he's been doing and how long he's been doing magic and uh, you know performance and everything else. It also gets into some of his personal life and why he does some of the things that he does. And this dude's like, what, 79, 89, some odd years old. I mean, he's old. He's like George Burns kind of old. And he's <laughs> he's like he, he's got the, the old man hunch and everything else. And he's still just as lively as, as he was in his youth. And it's, it's crazy. Um, and if you're a Penn & Teller fan, if you're a Penn & Teller fan and you haven't heard of or seen something by Amazing Randy... Like you need to question your fanhood of Penn and Teller because <laughs> that's really they, they are an extension of him in a way. So oh, yeah. Um, yeah, Kent, what what do you know about Amazing Randy? Like, have you ever heard of him before? Uh, it sounds familiar, and I bet somewhere in my nearly forty years of travels on this earth, I've come across this stuff. But yeah, I'm not. I'm really not familiar. It's definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. Yeah, I'll check it out. Yeah. All right. Uh, how about you, Kent? This one I didn't get a chance to watch. Yeah, Daniel Levitin, How to Stay Calm When You Know You'll Be Stressed. He tells a, a, a pretty interesting story at the beginning how he got locked out of his house the night before he had to catch a flight and it stressed him out. He had to break into his house. This, and, this sounds like a jury episode. Yeah, <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Uh, anyway, so he, he went through this, this whole it's very stressful, overly stressful situation, and he finally he he works it out and he just, it's fine. He makes it to the airport on time and all that stuff, but he forgot his passport. And basically, the the whole idea of this talk is that when we're stressed, we don't think clearly, mm -hmm. and it it benefits us to put systems in place that. Uh, you know things that we don't have to think about, and one of the biggest things that we have to think about all the time that we shouldn't is where is this thing? Where are my keys? Where's my wallet? Where are my shoes? Where's you name it? And if one simple thing that we can do is always put things in a designated place. So like you know a hook next to the door for your keys, for example. You know so if you always put your keys on that hook instead of you know randomly tossing them on a shelf or on the nightstand or what have you, you'll never ever have to look for your keys. That piece of stress will be gone from your life forever if you always have things this, where they this, are. This really sounds like a total win for OCD. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but, and he goes further than that. It, it's actually, 
it's a really good talk. Finally, because uh, <laughs> the last two or three have have, have been non rex for me, but actually, I really <laughs> like this one. Uh, it, the uh, The title of it is a little misleading. I think how to stay calm when you know you'll be stressed. That I think that's oversimplifying it. Uh, because especially people with anxiety issues, this is not going to help them, at least not very significantly. Um, however, I, I, I do think that this will simplify uh, some of the st- more stressful things that, that we have in our lives that we you know, just doesn't need to be stressful. Cool. How much of a, uh, how much of an OCD bug do you have, Dan? Oh, I wouldn't say too much. Uh, <laughs> I mean, knows. I guess, I, like I, I'd say with all of us, you know, it depends on what it is. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm a clean, but uh, clean guy for the most part, but I don't really, you know, something out of place. I, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I yeah. I'm, I'm, I'll have to tap my feet three times every time, you know, one, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't have, I, I don't have anything like that. Like I'm not a monk or anything, you know, but, um, <laughs> have you ever seen that show man that show is an amazing show it ran for like nine yeah. seasons catch it um, yeah that's pretty good uh but uh but i definitely have my tendencies there's certain things that have to be in a certain place in a certain way um famously for for <laughs> the ritual misery fans from back in the day um in high school and all through i don't know until i stopped using them really all of my cds had to be right side up in the case so when <laughs> yeah, i opened it yeah. it was right there and that would drive me nuts because they can't would get a hold of my damn CDs and just open it, and swirl it around a little bit, and close it, put it off the side yep. just to, just yeah. to mess just with to it. Just to fuck you. <laughs> that, that was the first time that I actually noticed. Hey, I've got a little bit of an OCD complex here, you know. <laughs> so yeah, you would lose your shit, and it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, I, I don't have a huge OCD bug. However, a lot of the things that that uh, Daniel Levitin talked about. I kind of incorporate like like the you know my keys always being in the same place, things like that. Like I, there are certain things that I use every day that they have to be. I have to put them in the in the same place. Like if if somebody takes like for example, if I let uh, Steph or somebody use my keys, I it's like I follow that person around until I get it back because mm. that's one of those things that because I know they're just going to put it on the table or some shit and yep. that's not where it goes. It goes over here. <laughs> you, you, you know where you know where my keys go. And this is going to be one of those things that when I retire, it's going to be awkward. It's going to be, have to be a transition. <laughs> my keys go in my hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm at work, they go in my hat. My hat goes yeah. in the same place. If I'm at home, they go in my hat. If I'm not on duty, I come home, my keys go in my hat. Right. So when I no longer am in the military, I'm still going to have to have a freaking hat by the door for my keys. <laughs> <laughs> Like that way, it's like I'm not looking for my keys. I know where my keys are. Where the fuck is my hat? <laughs> <laughs> right. So <laughs> that's one of those things for me. Um, yeah, you can just keep your BDU cap. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I'll have to do. I just have to keep my BDU or ABU cap. Oh yeah, yeah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And then I haven't been retired that long. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll uh, they'll upgrade the uniforms again. I'll just have to go out and get the new one. So that I, <laughs> because I'm also an upgrade freak. <laughs> you gotta have the latest well, shit all the time. Um, okay, so my TED talk, uh, Mark Ronson, how sampling transformed music. Uh, Mark Ronson is on his own um, a fairly uh, fairly successful musical artist uh I'm, I'm sure you guys have heard uptown funk uh mm. he's the uh the creative mind behind that um and he's got he's got several projects with and without guest stars and guest singers and stuff like that and he comes on and he basically breaks down sampling by sampling ted talks into a song to start with and kind of goes into some of the old classic mu- uh, uh music like rapper's delight and things like that, and how sampling suddenly became a thing, and how it's still mm-hmm. a thing now, but they just tweak it enough to where you, it's harder to they mask it better, really. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, if you if you enjoy music, regardless of what kind of music you enjoy, uh, as long as it's played on the radio in the last fifty years, you should probably <laughs> listen to this. And uh, it, I, I would recommend it. It's 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 a fun it's a fun one that, that it's interesting, and he's got a, a very nice personality to go along with it. So. 
I enjoyed it. I don't want to say too much, mostly because it's musical based, and well, I'm not going to see her beatbox on my microphone. So. <laughs> uh, I, we we all appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Screw you. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Amos, and I'm here to say that rapping is a o a o k. Oh, see, and I got a rapper right there. Like it's good. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that is, <laughs> that's awesome. So that's the uh, that's our TED talks of the week. Um, we don't have a main topic this week. Like we, I, I don't know. I don't. Jan is our main topic. Yeah, that's that's kind of kind of what we're doing. Yeah, so did you say you had questions about like Diamond Club or something? Or, I don't know. <laughs> oh, so I, I, actually, I do have a question. Yeah, I've, I've got plenty of questions. It's a matter of in my mind because I, I watched your your uh, your appearance on Diamond Dialogue. Mm, um, sure. Yeah, and so, so that's you know that's how I learned about the 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 origin of Sergeant Muffin, and uh, you know some of the other things that you do for Diamond Club. So I'm, I'm I don't want to not ask a question because I've seen it. So I figured I'd let I'd let Kent ask some questions since you know he hasn't done as much research as I have. It sounds yeah. weird, or so you think. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I, I'm just curious. How did you how did you get involved with with chat realm and to the point where you're actually designing the oh, sure. server and, and, and everything for diamond club TV. Yeah. What, what originally happened, I started, I've always been a Leo Laporte fan. Um, and you know, I was watching their network randomly. And I'm like, Oh, who are these guys? Hey, I remember him seeing them on scam school, you know, cause mm. revision three was big at one point and mm. you know, they were, I, I was just flipping through the shows at the time. Martin, you know, Sergeant had his show on there, and um, that, that's kind of just. I, I got to the point with them, like I knew who they were. Didn't really watch anything they did, but then I'm like, oh my gosh, it's kind of nice to have a show not about technology on a tech <laughs> uh, network. You know? It's just it's a way to unwind. And I started listening. I'm like, wow, this is entertaining. So, so, so you're talking about NSFW I, show? Yes. Okay. And mm-hmm. I I didn't watch them all, but. I just I started to get into that and I I kind of re- oh I kind of really started watching as soon as they went independent mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then from there I'm just like hmm you know that's kind of cool I want to uh, unrelated to at the time I'm like I want to create a a website for my friends and you know myself when we go streaming you know when we have stuff live we can share our video with other people and kind of do like a channel system so that's where that portion came from it was kind of unrelated not designed for uh diamond club which we're, probably in the future we'll get rid of channel numbers and just go with you know names mm. Mm. but yeah uh out of nowhere um you know i was just showing all the stuff i think it was nashcom who saw it and really liked it he told brian right away and brian just flipped he's like oh my <laughs> gosh this is the coolest thing ever yeah <laughs> and yeah you know if you saw some of the night attacks you know they were saying oh we gotta we gotta talk to them we got to talk to the Brick Slap guys. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, hey, hi. And I've been in, you know, I was hanging out in chat around that time, too. Uh, mm. But, yeah, from there, they're like, hey, yeah. yeah. Went a few emails back and forth, and they said, yeah, we'll, we'll give you the domain name. You got, you do this. Just move it over, and, you know, thank you. So, yeah. yeah. And awesome. I'm like, oh, yeah. how can I make it better? Because that's what I like doing. <laughs> now that I, I kind of did what I did now with, my gaming community back in the day for Unreal two uh, two thousand four, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time doing stuff just to stay busy and to learn. Hmm. And hmm. now that I don't have to deal with that, I got the time to focus on Diamond Club. So, doing all sorts of fun stuff. I got some fun things in the works, and yeah, I I like to think it's running smooth for the most part. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, we we had some issues with the video streaming when we were in Canada. Uh, you know, those that Canadian bandwidth. It's not <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we moved yeah. down to high velocity in Florida and that's what's serving the video right now. And we have one gigabit per second just ready to just do to hit thing. everyone. Yeah, yeah that's, that's awesome. sweet. That is that sweet. Is awesome. Um yeah. and, and I just want to say thank you on behalf of, of everybody that watches D C T V because man, because I, I watched the the old incarnation and then I watched the transformation. Over, what was it? Four months ago? Five months ago? Something like that. April first, actually. Oh, was it that long ago? Yeah. It was April first. Well, I was like, "Holy shit!" Like this was a huge, huge upgrade. It was, mm-hmm. it was absolute brilliant work. I thought so. Well, and the the part is, you know, I'm people are like, oh, you know, so, it it looks good, but it, you can tell it's not 
super high tech looking, at least from a, a user standpoint. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I'll tell you, I'll be, I'll be the first one to tell you, I'm a back end programmer, which means I can make the stuff work really well. But I'm not so good on the design side. I mean, yes, I work in marketing. I can do print ads just great. But, right. you know, when it comes down to laying things out, especially with new technology, because now we got, you know, there's the mobile version and all that stuff. You know, it's it's tough. It takes a lot of testing. And all of a sudden, oh, I got this great idea. It's ready to go. And then you open it on Firefox and the Firefox is like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know, and then it's like, and then you go back and you find that and then you fix it. And like, oh great, now this is throwing this off. So you gotta I mean, find that one the tag that screwed play, everything. They, yeah, yeah, they play <laughs> smooth, but it's, sometimes you just get blindsided. You're like, why in the hell? Yeah. And, and then, you know, we run into issues. For example, people are like, well, I don't want to use Flash Player. So now we have the thing where you can, if you have Chrome or Internet Explorer, I believe, or Edge, you can. I think it has to be Internet Explorer 10 or newer you can load the site without a flash player and the it will work so that nice. was a real real pain in the ass but <laughs> one, <laughs> one browser that still won't do it because they're still trying to figure out what they want to do is firefox mm. so it, it's just that thing you you have to and i mean you guys you, you worked with html mm. it still had that problem even back in the day mm-hmm. yeah you know oh, something yeah. worked great on uh, yeah, ie and all of a sudden you throw netscape at it and it's yeah. like what <laughs> What did you say? HTML? No, yeah. we use Netscape code. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had a family member that used Web TV. So um, I downloaded a Web TV emulator to I, try to get all my websites to, to work properly on that piece of shit. I, oh. I, I actually, that was my first experience on the internet. Was it Web TV right after I got to Shaw in 96? Yeah, oh yeah. Um, I remember. I went and bought it. At, oh my gosh. And it was calling long distance to Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. So, like, my first weekend, you know, the first weekend, like, my roommate was gone, so I had nothing better to do. I was just sitting there in the chat rooms and browsing sites and everything else, you know, thinking this, this is the coolest shit ever. And then on Monday, we don't have phone service. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, because you probably racked up, like, 7,000 two, minutes 200, of phone $222 worth. <laughs> It's so sick. Oh my god! So, Dial up. And just in one weekend, it was it was amazing. It was because it was that local long distance, you know, that yes, that just barely outside your zone. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so it was like oh, four so times much. as much as like I could have called my mom for like six years for two hundred bucks up in Indiana, yeah. but calling yep. Charlotte right up the road was <laughs> one weekend Ridiculous. done. So and then it was of course it was like three weeks later that they opened one in Columbia, so it became local again. I was like, you motherfuckers. I'll go right, just in time. Yeah. yeah. And then that's, uh, I spent $200, $222 on that. I'll never forget that amount, $222. And then two months later, I went and spent um, $600, something like that, on my first computer. <laughs> on my first non-Tandy 1000 computer. Right. And, uh, yeah, it was a Midwest Micro, you know, when they had like 500 companies that would all sell you a computer and everything else, some advertisement on a PC mag or whatever. Yeah. And thus Packard began. Bell. Yeah. <laughs> but Packard Bell was my first computer. Uh, see, I, I bought my computer. This is this is this is Kent and his cheapskateness. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I bought my computer and I spent like six hundred bucks on it. Six I don't know six thirty two or something like that. It was a little more than six hundred. Uh, I had upgraded. It was the base system. I upgraded the RAM because uh, one of my buddies told me that I needed to upgrade the RAM to make sure I had at least. Um, 16 megabytes or something like that in it that um, right, yeah. yeah and uh it was a uh intel uh 133 there's a pentium 133 and <laughs> and i upgraded from a 36.6 to a 56k modem and uh, it was lee bogner actually helped me buy my, buy my, oh, my first computer I yeah and uh because he bought one almost exactly like it so we'd be in the same dorm playing uh red alert uh, Command and Conquer Red Alert, <laughs> yes, and the, yes. the phone lines going into our computer would be so hot, like you could barely touch it. <laughs> oh, did you oh actually my. get 56, close to 56 with yours? Um, I, I didn't understand ping rates and everything else at the time. I just knew that if I would played Bogue, because it was a direct dial in CNC Red Alert, it was a direct dial, okay. like I just dialed his number and the modem would actually oh, yeah. call his computer. Um, so I don't know how much switching had to be done if there's like a mobile or a miniature switch in the dorm just to go between the numbers or if it actually went back to the phone company downtown Sumter or whatever, but it was, 
Like the the phone lines were hot. Like we were worried. <laughs> I was gonna say you're lucky. I had a 56k modem, but we got 288. That's the, our phone lines were shit. <laughs> yeah, so, that's about what I was. On a good day, I could get 32. I think. Yeah, well, when my first 60. internet provider, they were like, "Yeah, we can give you you know X amount, but if you have a 56 six or 56k modem, you can get up to this amount." Like that was like a determining factor on how fast they would provide <laughs> your service. So you had to call and tell them if you had a higher than 36.6 modem so they could bump you up to the next <laughs> tier. <laughs> Shit. Oh, and then if you had a V.90. Woo, boy. <laughs> I oh remember a uh, rich snob with an ISDN line. Mm. Yes. Oh, my God. Those bastards. Oh, man. We had a... Yeah, my, the guy that sold me my computer told me that the 6 gig hard drive that came with it, yeah. I would never ever in my wildest dreams fill that thing up yeah yeah <laughs> now well, i download files bigger that, that's, than that. that's what i was gonna say i spent like 600 some dollars on my first computer and uh i told ken about it and ken's like i just bought a word processor man why would i need a computer <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well that's when the that's back when the internet was a very 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 limited use i was like man was like well you know that wow but i know three people that have the internet <laughs> Uh, so yeah. I guess it's in them emails. Yeah, I, I, I don't I, even talk to them. Why would I send them an email? Like <laughs> you, you had to like you go to Netscape page and you could buy the browser, or you could get it for free. But it was like the it wasn't the latest version of the Netscape Navigator. <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> God, I remember uh, the yeah. Navigator Explorer Wars. Uh, anyway, back to, <laughs> back to Dan. <laughs> no, hi Dan. <laughs> when did you first get on the internet? Like, what was your first internet experience? Ooh, good, good question. Uh, that's, I would say that would be in third grade. Uh, we had our Packard Bell 120 megahertz computer. And I think I was, yeah, we had it for about, I'd say about a year. And then it was a surprise. I think it was a Christmas gift. What to the family was to get on our 14.4 modem to get uh, internet access through PowerNet, which was a local ISP. <laughs> and I remember hopping online and... At the time, Cartoon Planet and you know Space Ghost and that on Cartoon Network was kind of big. If you ever heard of them, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, oh yeah. I I would go onto the site. And me and my friends, they'd come over and they we'd sit there and wait forever for like a ten second Brack clip. Yeah, and you know you're just thinking about it now. Or even I think the the longest thing I ever waited for was the Safety Dance music video. <laughs> oh my God! Thirteen awesome. megabytes. <laughs> 13 oh, megabytes in size over dial-up. Oh. The longest and thing I then, waited for. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Finish your No, story. I was going to say, and then I think at the end it, it crapped out anyways. Yes. <laughs> You're like, oh, oh yes. man. <laughs> Beating the keyboard on the desk. <laughs> the longest thing that I waited for on 56K was the uh, Star Wars Episode One teaser trailer. That fucking thing, it was like a minute and a half long or something, and it took like three or four hours to fully download. Yeah. On a dial-up connection in Japan. Yes. Where you had to pay a local toll charge. It was like, oh. what, what was it, Amos? Like 10 yen for every three minutes or yeah. some bullshit? Yeah, and then, and then we got the local access number on base. Oh. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that was, oh, it was awful. <clears throat> but at the time, I thought it was worth it. And, oh, and it was only like thumbnail size. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was awful. It, it was it was actually well, yeah, like eight hundred by six hundred, but this speaker and just kind of go up real close to make it look bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like now I'm in a movie theater. It's fucking surround sound. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a buddy of mine. We were playing EverQuest like in uh, two thousand, two thousand maybe maybe two thousand one. Yeah, I guess it was two thousand one because I played EverQuest for the first time on nine eleven. Um, oh shit. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's that's how you that's how you start start playing a game right there is nine eleven happening. Um, it was during a typhoon. It was, and uh, <laughs> we were on lockdown. I was like, you know what? I'll go ahead and try it. I had already bought the little box head or whatever. But a bit, a friend of mine uh, named Chad, he was actually shotgunning two modems with two internet lines. You know, because we had we only had one hundred and twenty hours or whatever to use. Mm. So he had two accounts on each of his uh, on each of his numbers each of his phone numbers he had two phone numbers installed in his house on base and he was shotgunning two 56k modems to get the throughput so he'd have zero lag zero <laughs> lag when when uh when he was playing everquest and his his ping rate from japan was still like like 600 
You know what I mean? But he was oh, yeah. shotgunning. Dial because up he, by design is like three hundred. Yeah, it was so yeah. so awesome compared to the to the shit that we the, like. I was playing just from the other side of base, and you know he'd like come across a message, blah 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 blah. And like what? King, uh, Captain Crush or King Crush or whatever it was, you know? And Crushbone, like, hey, he just popped. I'm like, I'm looking. He's not there. Poop. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, that was that was those were the days, man. Whew. Early internet. Our kids will never understand. Oh no. Or early no. cell phones when you only got like ten minutes a month or something like that. <sighs> oh yeah, for like sixty dollars. Yeah, seventy so- bucks for. <laughs> 70 bucks for like uh i want to say it was like 30 minutes sending you could receive all the calls you wanted right yeah, but yeah. i got 30 my, minutes outbound and my every first cell phone was cellular one and it was about the size of a boot right <laughs> <laughs> i remember you had it in your truck <laughs> it's like in this yes. case well yeah the, the car phones right <laughs> well no it was an actual cell phone i could walk around with it but the damn thing was like <laughs> it was like <laughs> Hello. <laughs> What's that? Was it one that was the bag phone where you had like the extra part that you'd lift up? <coughs> oh, no. no, no, it was all one piece. But it had the the antenna that I had to pull out. The the oh, antenna sorry. was so big he had to stop on the side of the road to pull the antenna out because it had to go out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Just driving on the street. <laughs> That was bad. It was terrible. Oh my gosh! Yes, my my first uh, my first cell phone had that little plastic flip thing. Then every thought that everyone thought the microphone was down at the bottom of that, so they'd try to yell into that piece, you know. <laughs> when you could clearly see the microphone hole up by the numbers, you know. No, the plastic piece is just there to to protect the the number pad. Yeah, it was one of those. <laughs> Crazy, and crazy. then uh, yeah oh man we could reminisce all day this is just the the reminiscence episode here yeah. <laughs> oh, of, of days of tech gone by oh man all right uh so so there's there's a couple of things we had we had on our little list to talk about today um so i, I want to go ahead and get to this uh real quick earlier this week i saw a whole lot of will wheaton bashing on on twitter and I understand, you know, there's there's bashing out there. People bash people, whatever else. Maybe there's some people that just think Will Wheaton is just the biggest piece of shit that ever hit the internet. I don't, I don't know. I think he seems pretty cool to me. He's never never shown like a major dick attitude. Um, and the interviews I've seen with him, the TV shows, whatever else, he's like he's he, he's always very personable, if if not very private, but still very personable. And uh, I I. I it, it it hurts that people would use Twitter in such a way as just to bash people and literally put pictures of dog turds and say, this is you. You know what I mean? On a person who has done nothing to no one that I can tell, it, it bothers me. So I started thinking about, if not for trolls, what is the best case scenario? What is the best use case for Twitter? I like it for news. Um, for example, I mean, if I hear something, some bad event, which the last few weeks we've had a few, yeah, you know that there's two places or there's two places I check. One is Reddit because they usually have if something's severe enough, they have a live feed, uh, and then Twitter because Twitter's instant, and you can hop on there. There's a moments area, and you know you follow source. I I like it. It's kind of like the Facebook that doesn't, it treats everyone fairly. Hmm. You know, Facebook, it, it looks at who you hang out with or the people that you actually, you know, it tries to figure out who you care about right. and deliver mm. that stuff to you and yeah. not the extra crap. What about you, Kent? Because um, you're, you're fairly yeah. new to Twitter. I mean, you only started doing Twitter because I insisted that you do it for the show. Right. So, uh, yeah, like just, just over a year ago, probably going on a year and a half at this point, Um th- you know, I, I do a little bit of the same thing uh, following current events, but it's mostly Twitter, for the most part, for me, is entertainment. And honestly, the, the biggest thing that I get out of Twitter is following the people whose podcasts I listen to. You know, so like Brian and Justin and Tom and Veronica and et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, seeing what. You, you know what's what's coming up next, or or them making comments about their last show or something like that, and I get an entertainment value out of that. And that's probably 
I'd say 90% of, of my Twitter experience is that. Cool. Um, mine is a little bit different. Um, this last week, I found what I thought was a, a perfect reason for using, using Twitter. And I've done it this way a few times. I made a remark on the fact that my podcast uh, listener of choice or podcast player of choice is Pocket Casts. Mm-hmm. And at one time, it had 420 unlistened to podcasts on there. <laughs> and I made the comment that Pocket Cast, and I tagged him in it, Pocket Cast is, is trying to tell me that I must be high if I think I'm ever going to catch up to these podcasts. <laughs> and uh, you know, the, uh, the picture that I sent with it had a picture of my, you know, my home screen on my phone, which had a picture of my dog and my daughter on it. And Pocket Cast came back, and I'm sure it's a PR rep or whatever, but Pocket Cast came back and said, you know, um, so something like, you know, that, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, we think you're right or whatever, we agree. Um, by the way, you've got a human-sized dog on your phone, you know? And, and, <laughs> yeah. and what that did for me um, instantly, and, it, and it's done it for several people, you know, different people have tweeted about different stuff. Tay Allen, for instance, you know, uh, the Possum Posse, you know, different artists. Uh, um, some people are really famous for, like, Kevin Smith. You, you tweet to Kevin Smith, he's going to reply. You know, that's just mm-hmm. that's what he does. What, what it does is it takes the unreachable, you know, whether it be a company or a celebrity, and right, it brings right, right, it right. very personal and very close. You know, uh, if you tweet Felicia Day, she's going to respond. The best way to get a response from, uh, from um, uh, shit, I can't remember her name, uh, the chick from Firefly. Like, I read her tweets all the time. I can't think of her name right now. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, um, oh, you're talking about uh, the she, girl that played she, Kaylee. She, yeah, she played Kaylee. Um, but, the best way to get yeah, a response her. from her is to say something like, oh, you don't look like Kaylee. And she'll come back and be like, well, you don't look like a Twitter avatar. So what the fuck, you know, <laughs> like, and there's so many different personalities, but it's, it's a way to, to reach the otherwise unreachable, you know, how did, how did we get on diamond club TV? I sent a tweet to Sergeant Muffin saying, right, Hey, you know, right. I, I've heard that you're, you're the person to talk to about, you know, trying to get this hooked up, you know, why don't you check this out and see if it's something that you think is, jives with it. You know, mm-hmm. then I caught him in the chat room and, you know, but it, 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 get, it takes the unreachable, whether it's a company or whatever else, and puts it in a public display in a way that, you know, if I'm harassing somebody and they ignore me, everybody knows why, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. but if I'm, if I'm nice and I'm just asking questions, whatever else, I get an answer more times than not. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what it, what it does. It, it, it bridges that gap. It's that... You know, if uh, if Jimmy Smith was a fan of Marilyn Monroe and sent her a letter, if you could find an address for her, she never saw it, mm. you know. But if <clears throat> if uh, one of the biggest celebrities in my mind, um, you know, Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson, I can tweet Neil deGrasse Tyson anytime I like. And chances are, if I'm, you know, cordial and nice he will likely respond. Yeah. And if not, yeah, yeah. you know he's reading it. Yeah. Because he manages his own, his own stuff. Right. You know, so mm-hmm. there's, there's, I just, th- I think that is just like USB was such an amazing invention for computers. <laughs> I think Twitter is an amazing invention for celebrities and companies with the public. I think, I just think it's, it's great. And I think that's what it should be there for. It shouldn't be there for, for bashing people and everything else. And I think if, if I saw someone in my feed, one of my, one of the people that I follow or even one of my followers bashing people and using, you know, doing stuff like that. Now I'm all about being a dick. If you want to be a dick, go be a dick. But if that's what you do on a constant basis, I I can, I can dump that part of you out of my life completely. Right. Very quickly. Yeah. No, I, I agree completely, but I, I, I got to back you up a bit here. What, you're talking about Will Wheaton being bashed. Uh, this mm-hmm. is, this is brand new news to me. What, what, was uh, this o- was this over a particular? Um, I think he made thing? like a political statement or uh, made a remark about the one of the debates or whatever. Oh, oh sure. In this point in time, I mean, you say anything about that, you're going to divide your fan base. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I don't, so, I don't think yeah. it was the fan base because it, it was clearly oh, just randos. Yeah, oh, like sure. it, you know these these mm. were it wasn't an affection and bashing. It wasn't they weren't oh, even bashing yeah. the issue. They were bashing him. Yeah, so he's you know, totally being trolled. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's just, it, yeah. you know, fuck you, you know? <laughs> yeah, fuck that. That's, yeah. Well, you, so, yeah, I, I've said many times on this show how I feel about trolls. <laughs> <laughs> Can't 
can't get enough of them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's it. <laughs> and that's why at the end of every episode, you post your mailing address and <laughs> yeah. direct to your office. <laughs> and then your yeah. boss's phone number to yeah. tell yes. everyone I, to call and say, what a nice guy you are. I, actually, <laughs> actually, we should do that just one time. Our our official business business address for a ritual misery is a buddy of mine's house in in Abilene, Texas. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure he would love that shit. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. So, kind of a, a side note thing. Um, the Eric Andre show is a, a kind of a joke interview show, but Seth Rogen was on, and he's like, uh, out of nowhere, uh, Eric Andre says, "Hey, how about this? Uh, some about your phone number." And the, his phone number shows at the bottom of the screen. And oh. then uh, what they did is they, I think they grabbed a cell phone, just put his, and ha- they had him record his own voicemail on it and just threw it, you know, threw it in a corner and left it plugged in. So you could call that number and it actually went to his voicemail, but it probably was a fake phone. <laughs> That's a big one. That's so funny because it flashed right on the screen. And he's like, I'm not going to put my number out there. Uh. <laughs> and it's just right at the top of the screen and says, This is his number. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's so crazy. I love oh, it. It, was, it had to, totally had to be a Google voice number. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> it was. Probably was. <clears throat> That's another thing. I love Google voice. I think it's remarkable. Um, all right. Uh, we You got something on here, Getty Images. You had a little story with, uh, with oh, yeah, some yeah. fun times there. <laughs> well, yes and no. I mean, we're still kind of in the middle of it. and I mean, I should probably state all this stuff as opinion. Um <laughs> You know, I, you can't be too safe with big companies. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, pretty much what happened, um, the company that I work with, I, I or that I work for, and I handle the website and things like that. Um, out of nowhere, we received a request stating that one of our images was from one of their photographers that uses their site. So I'm like, okay, well, this is news to me because I, you know, first off, I should, you know, kind of divide saying, you know when you're doing stuff for personal use, you can be a little bit more laxed. When you're doing things for business, you got to follow the rules. I mean, that's just obvious. Right. Oh, totally. So, yeah. What I, what I was doing, you know, we don't use too many stock photo styled images on the website. And we did just one. And I, at the time, now this is like six months ago, but prior to the letter, I remember going to a site that claimed it was free to use. And... So, you know, I'm not going to worry about it. But then they send a letter saying, here, it is actually from our site. And you owe us, the, you know, we're, we're just asking for like the last three months worth of the cost for the image. And we'll give that to the photographer. But the amount was $1,023. Like, was it that good of a picture? <laughs> no, I mean, it, it was a good photo. I mean, the person who took it was very, very skilled. Um, but it was clear. I mean, that was not my intention to steal an image never mm-hmm. was and the the thing that's very frustrating and i am all about people protecting their rights and their what they take but the way they do it is very appalling because most mm-hmm. of it's automation and they don't you know i i looked it up and i just you know, I was searching some copyright laws for you know to to just say that you owe money without showing proof of a copyright that that's wrong and I right. get it, yes, a, fo- a copyright exists when you take a photo, which is what they'll tell you. Mm-hmm. But a court doesn't give a shit about that. What they care about is that you can show proof that you registered this photo with the copyright office or else the fine is so small, no one's going to take you to court over it. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. what they're doing is they're and, – and it's not their fault. About, I'd say, was it a few years ago, they bought a company, PicScout, and that's what that website did is they scan the internet for photos. So you mm. can upload all your photos to Pixco and say, these are my photos. You find the offenders and you bring them to me. Mm. And that's what they'll do. So, <laughs> of course, with their partnership, they were able to do it very efficiently. So it's all automated, mm. just searches for signatures. And we, we honestly just got so frustrated. We actually just got an IP lawyer to send off a, a, a letter. And we're, we're still kind of waiting on it. But it's just... I don't know. It just it bugs me that things like this happen and you don't hear about it a lot. But guarantee mm. you, just look it up. Um, I, we're not the only ones. It's all automated. Uh, you're you're going to see people that are even running nonprofits, which apparently mm. that's considered fair use for whatever they license. Mm. Uh, and 
they'll send that off to scare the crap out of you. And I guarantee you, I mean, how would you feel if you got a, a legal letter <laughs> stating that you, you know, they don't have a license for this image and you had no idea? Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, right, of right. course, you don't ever steal images off of Google Images and expect that, which is, that's not what we did. Mm-hmm. But it's just, mm-hmm. yeah, I just thought I'd bring that up and just look at <clears throat> yeah. Google search. Um, a lot of people use the keyword extortion letter. Because oh, right. Indirectly, I mean, it depends what side you're on looking at it. Right. I felt like we were being extorted for because, number one, we owed money. Number two, we couldn't talk to anyone that gave us a legitimate answer except a canned response, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is the closest response we got. Just send it. You can't really. I'm, and they're all just really, really You know I'm all about IP protection and and all of that. And, uh, you know, I'm even fine with the cease and desist. Like, hey, I, we just discovered that you're using our image. You know, take it down. I would have okay, taken oh, Absolutely, have absolutely. Bucks, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. But, you know, bully tactics. I mean, is it really necessary? I mean, I guess in some cases you might have to resort to that. But as your, your out-of-the-door response, that's – yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Well, it's to put in perspective, that image I found, well, actually, Chat Realm helped me find it. It was on another website claiming free to use images. Mm. That wasn't the one I got it from, but I guarantee you, I mean, yeah. do you see them taking it down? No. Yeah. And those are the well, sites I'm, they need to go after. Yeah. And, you know, on the, on the flip of this, uh, Scott Johnson actually just, I think it was today, actually tweeted about another of his images was like stolen by somebody somebody's it selling a lot. yeah yeah it happens i mean i'm sure it happens like a ridiculous amount of time because i i know scott has had to deal with this over and over just him yep. you know i mean it, you know, so i know it's a problem uh, on that same token um i believe current geek uh and uh daily tech news show have both been hit with cease and desist notifications and shit like that for their videos on on music or whatever else that they've rightfully, um, you know, licensed out or was clearly fair use, you know, daily mm-hmm. tech news shows a news show and, you know, done so in commentary or for, you know, whatever reason. And, uh, yeah, so they, they've gotten really, really careful about that. But I remember in the early days of both of those shows, um, they were, they were getting hit with that stuff. So it, it, the whole copyright system is, you know, there, there's a reason we release everything that me and Kent have ever done on a creative commons license. You know, yeah. all, all we yeah. want is just, hey, tell people where you found it. You can use it all you want. We don't care. Yeah. Yeah. You know, exactly. the music we have is by attribution. That's why I, I, you know, that's why every show I make sure that, I, uh, you know, I, I, I thank uh, Kevin McLeod for the use of his music. Um, it's on the Web page exactly how he wants it and everything else. There are perfectly legitimate ways to avoid copyright or to maintain copyright and still have plenty of fair usage out there. An mm-hmm. opportunity. Um, Absolutely. I just think the system is so fuckered up right now. It's like yeah. our political system. It's never going to get fixed. It's just going <laughs> to degrade. It's just, it's entropy in, in, yeah. in motion. Everything has know? a lifespan. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Over time, everything degrades, period. Um, it's like the, the second law of thermodynamics or something. I don't know. It's it, according to uh, George Carlin, it's how the universe runs. And I, I, I you know, yeah, <laughs> I'm a, a Carlinite if nothing else. So, <laughs> all right. Um, speaking of fair use, I'm going to play about uh, 10 seconds of a video that uh, I, I think this video is absolutely amazing, and I, I'll, I'll reserve why I think it's so amazing um, for for after we watch it. I'm gonna go to when my hands here. don't play the strings the same way, and, and I'm playing the full size thing so everybody can see exactly what comes you from. will still love me the same. Cause honey, your soul could never grow. Oh, it's evergreen. Okay, I think that's enough to p- prove my point there. Um, before we get a takedown notice, uh, <laughs> it's uh, Ed Sheeran. Thinking Out Loud. Now, this song is about a year old. It was released about a year ago. Um, but the reason I love this video so much, uh, I, I, I'm an Apple fanboy, self-admittedly. Um, I do have a, a slight tendency of OCD. And within both of those confines, I enjoy functionality, exquisite functionality, 
when it's exquisitely minimalist. Mm-hmm. When you can provide provide something and have a service or a product that isn't super flashy, it's exceptionally well done and exactly what you need with nothing extra, no no bonus shit that nobody cares about or whatever else. It's just the service you need or the product that you need or the entertainment that you want at its most basic level. And if you can take that and throw in an emotional attachment into it, um, especially when it comes to music, and then you can you can define, like this particular instance, this song, it's an amazing song. It's a great song. It's not overproduced. Uh, it's heavy in vocals. Um, it's not overly, you know, there's not a bunch of music like overlaid with it and everything else. Very clean, very lean, beautiful song. And in order to represent that, the video that they chose for it, if you haven't seen it, please watch it. It's just two people dancing around in a ballroom. That's all it is. Now, they do some some creative lighting and the filming, things like that. You know, the artistry of the actual video is clearly evident. But then you start looking at it, and in the video, it's Ed Sheeran being the male dancer. You know? Mm. He went, he, he did like uh, five hours of practice for four weeks straight while he was on tour in order to get all the dance moves down and everything else so they could film this video. And the video is just these two people dancing. There's no other, there's no crowd. There's not a bunch of extras or anything else. And it's all just in one location. Mm. And the the pure simplicity of it and the fact that the video captures the emotion of the song so clearly. This is the kind of video that I just absolutely love. All these rap videos with booties bouncing or country videos with everybody, (laughs) you know, out dancing in mud pits and shit. It just doesn't do it for me, but a simple, very simple video like this. It, it's just a, a work of art that I really just absolutely love. So I figured I would share that. Uh, just my appreciation of random shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, uh, I'll, ta- I, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. Um, but if you haven't seen it, you, you, just, you owe it to yourself to spend four minutes and watch it. And if you do watch it and if you like it, there's plenty of clicks or plenty of links on how they made it and everything else. And I think I found it all very fascinating. Plus the dancer he's with, uh, Brittany Cherry. She's been on like a Dancing with the Stars, stuff like that. She's an amazing dancer and she's gorgeous. So that didn't hurt the eyes either. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, it, it, I, th- I thought that was very interesting. And for whatever reason, it's a year old video. I actually thought Justin Timberlake did the song and <laughs> until I randomly <laughs> came across the video. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's pretty awesome. So check that out. Um, that. Anything else May we want to cover today? Real quick. Huh? May I interject? Oh, by all means. Oh, okay, great. No, you brought up uh, the less is more, and I mean, that is so true in everything today. Everyone's trying to one-up, and people are forgetting that's a huge market. Just wants something basic that they can enjoy, you know, whether it's antivirus. Remember when that was a simple thing? Now they're all competing, uh, whether it's TV. You know, you can't just get plain cable anymore. You got to do get cable box and all these premium. You know, people... And I mean, you know, perfect example. Wouldn't you prefer just a basic cable option? You know, it's it, all this stuff is just everything is getting so complex because they're trying to add more and more, and yep. that's not always what people want. And especially mm-hmm. in cable, the more the complex they make it, the more they try to fill those niche audiences, the more diluted the actual creativity and and uh, value of what they show is. Well, it all it all starts to meld after a while, anyway, because I mean. Ch- channels like the History Channel and and um, uh, Sci-Fi, Net for, Geo, yeah, all of these all these channels they they appealed to a niche audience and they were successful for for a couple of years. Now what are they? They're they're filled with fucking reality shows. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with history. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and yeah. you see what they've been doing too is History Channel used to have pure history and it was great. Mm. Yeah, and oh, then it they was. went to yeah. all this reality show and then what did they do? History two had their original stuff. Yep. From the beginning. Just like and MTV. And it was a premium channel. Yeah. Just so you yes. had to pay more to get what you used to have. Yep. J- just like yep. MTV, because yeah. oh. MTV two had all the videos, you know, <sighs> and they only showed videos from like one o'clock a.m. to four o'clock a.m. or whatever, and it's they, and, and, and it's the same one hour block of videos just replayed three times. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's uh, yeah. Again, the more you try to fill it, the more you dilute the actual aspect that brought people there in the first place. 
And exactly. again, it, uh, simple, you know, less is more. And this, I think this video really captures that less is more, especially with, tied in with that song. It's just amazing. It's awesome. Mm. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so I, uh, before show, before the show, uh, I mentioned to Dan that uh, we'd like to do a weekly tithe. Um, you know, not all the time, but occasionally. And, uh, you know, we've done uh, some people that have inspired us or helped us out. Um just different different aspects, especially when it concerns the show or when certain things going on. And uh, about halfway through my description, Dan starts typing in into the show notes. <laughs> exactly. So, Dan, won't you uh, won't you take us through this real quick? America. Oh sure. No, I just you know you were talking about things that you really want to plug and just you watch the news and bad things are happening and something you always have to remember: bad things are always happening. I mean. But the problem with media is they know that people don't remember good things. They remember bad things. I mean, you talk about your life. Can you recall all the great times you had? Uh, well, some. But I can tell you, I can recall most of the bad times I've ever had because mm-hmm. they're mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. lodged in my brain, you know, the terrible experiences that we all have. Uh, so it's just remember, I mean, don't let the, the news take you down. Country is still very good. We have a few bumps, but. Hey, we we can still do our job, you know. We there's people fighting for us. There's people be, that we can have our normal uh, society for the most part, normal society. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you, you go look at other countries, even in today's world. I mean, we have it pretty good. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, I agree, hundred percent. And you you know talking about the the media, you know they capitalize on on the negative. Uh, because it, to them, it's all about, you know, w- which headline is going to get the click or w- what's going to make people watch the 10 o'clock news, is, if that's even still a thing. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah you know, it's all about ratings. It's all about clicks. It's all it's all know, about money. It, that's exactly what it comes down to. And it's, people don't buy good news. They buy bad news. Yep. They buy fear. They buy, well, they, you know, the yeah, scary news fear. is what fear they click is the on. Key word. Right. Fear ha- yeah. leaves you coming back. Yep. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And that's that's why, you know, p- people are like, oh, man, it didn't used to be this way. Why is it so bad today? Well, actually, if you look at statistics and real numbers, the world is probably the safest it's ever been today mm-hmm. than than yesterday or last week or last year or 10 years ago or 100 years ago. It is the safest now. But we yep. think it's so horrible because all we get fed is the negative and the the horrible yeah. and yep. that, there's you know, there's the, a there's a big aspect of NIMBY in the world too. Um, of what NIMBY? NIMBY is an acronym uh, given to me by the late great George Carlin. It stands for not in my backyard. Ah ah so, yes yes. Um, and it's it's a matter of it's a testimony to proximity is really what it is. The closer the news is to you, the more you care, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the bigger the threat is, the less you want it near you. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like this, uh, you know, the things are, you know, they, they had a, a bombing in, uh, in, in, was it Jakarta or some shit like that a couple weeks ago, we ended up doing a hundred percent recall here just to make sure nobody was on vacation there. And then, right. Right. Yeah. um, I didn't hear about it at the, in the news or anything else at all. And then the bombings and, uh, or well, well, it was actually shootings. The bombings were a secondary effect of, of the, the shooters getting either captured or cornered, um, but uh, the events in Paris last week or the week before, I, I can't even remember when the hell it was. Things are blurry. But, so, uh, a week ago. A week ago so, today. So when that happened, now we got people changing their Facebook on there, you know, their little profile pictures, and, you know, the news is all over it. Why? Because it's, it's closer to us. It reminds Americans of 9-11. You know, they, attack, mm-hmm. they attacked the biggest city in France. Um and, and it feeds into our fears. I mean, one of the biggest attacks was during a concert, a sold-out concert, you know? Um, mm-hmm. So it feeds – because anytime you're in a public place, the last thing you're thinking of is, hey, if they start shooting, I got nowhere to go. Well, now mm-hmm. you're going to start thinking that, you know, especially with Star Wars coming out. I mean, how many – how many, how much of an opportunity would that be, you know? Yeah. yeah. But, well, uh, that's – I mean, that's, that's they any – to live their life in fear. Exactly. That, that's, that's why they're called terrorists. They deal – in fear, in terror. They're trying to get you to change your life. And and if you want to look at how it is, I mean, uh, between Israel and Palestine, they've been terrorizing each other for decades. 
and mm-hmm. they're still living their life as it is because they just accept that that's how it is. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, you know, you if you think about it, if you want to talk numbers and <clears throat> should we be afraid and stuff like that, you know, look, look how big just our country, just look how big our country is. Let's say that one major event in one city gets attacked. And you know, Boston. But even if a hundred, even if a hundred people die, right? Boston. I'm, you know, no offense to to the, you know, the the victims, but you know, all right, you said Boston. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's say it happened in Boston, right? What, well, should the people in Dallas or San Francisco or Portland, you know, they all change their lifestyle to be afraid of that one thing that happened in Boston? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not yeah. worth it. But and if you do, you literally, if you change your life because of things that are going on like that, the terrorists win. Like that's, right. that's a literal case. Well, TSA well, is walking proof they won. Yeah. You have. Yeah. 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 If you've flown you, you lately, a, holy shit. You have a much higher likelihood of dying in a car crash than yep. you do in a terrorist attack and, or, and, and, or yes. murder or something like that. And not like like by a small margin, like by a very large margin. <laughs> Yeah, but nobody yeah. thinks twice about getting in the car. They're like, yeah, fuck yeah, right? Get in the car. Like they don't even think about it. Now, I'm, and I'm not trying to say that I want terrorist events to be a daily occurrence in my oh, area. I mean, oh hell no! Like I said, Absolutely. NIMBY, right? Um, but <laughs> it's it's still it's 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 where the world is going, and it, it's it's just the 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 political aspect of of the results of decisions that everybody has made i'm not even just gonna say americans you know because obviously they didn't attack paris to scare the shit out of people in palmdale california you know Mm -hmm. um so it's just a it's a cultural change and it's something that that the world needs to figure out a way to to defy if it can i mean i don't know that it's it you know the pandora's box got open and and now it's this is just how it's going to be from here on out yeah but for the, I mean, we don't let this stupid shit like that change the way that we hold together as not just a nation, but as a as a race. Yeah, just and, as and, a people. And, as, yeah, exactly. a, as as a species, you know what I mean? Mm. It's yeah. I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, but, yeah. Don't don't live in fear. Appreciate the good things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's plenty to appreciate when you forget. Absolutely. Yeah. That's good. You know, and next week is Thanksgiving. This is, didn't even think about that until just now. That That's a perfect lead in to, to, you know, the spirit of, of what we uh, try to express on Thanksgiving is, you know, the, the gratitude and everything. That's yeah. Beautiful yeah. And, and Thanksgiving never changed anybody's life. I mean, just ask a native American. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah let's, <laughs> let's not get into that. <laughs> Sorry. Too soon? Question mark. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's only been four hundred years. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, any uh, anything else that you guys would like to like to talk about and cover today? I think we covered it, man. Yeah. All right, uh, Dan. How can people follow you and, and keep up with uh, the random shit that you're doing for uh, for all of Diamond oh. Club and otherwise? Uh, at Sergeant Muffin on Twitter. And also, if you want to follow alerts when uh, Diamond Club shows go live, follow at DCTV Alerts. Um, a lot of people follow that. Um, also, SergeantMuffin.com, which I don't update, but uh, it has extra info. You can see some of the stuff I've done. But, but it's and there. And then, yep, <laughs> DiamondClub.tv. Awesome. Awesome. And Kent, how about you, man? Yeah, if you're a beer guy like me, go to RateBeer.com. Find me, username Del Noche. But if you really want to see what's going on in in my brain, anyway, whether it's humor or just some you know some observation, or whatever, go to Twitter and follow at rm underscore del noche. Excellent, excellent. Um, and uh, of course, people can find me Ethan Kane because my name's Anthony and I go by Amos and I use Ethan Kane as a tag. So you know, <laughs> it's, it's not confusing at all. It's <laughs> it You're makes scary. Right, yeah, yeah. It, it, makes, <laughs> it, it makes sense to me. Screw you, people. Um, <laughs> uh, you can submit ideas for the show, uh, ritualmisery.reddit.com. You can follow the show on Twitter at ritualmisery. You can email us, podcast at ritualmisery.com. You can call and leave, a, leave us a voicemail, 567 69 TRMPC. That's 567 698 7672. 
And uh, let me hit this little button right here before I forget. Um, of course, you can find all these links and more at our web webpage, ritualmisery.com. Uh, thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Uh, thank you for listening or watching. For Kent, for me, for Dan, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs>